If there is one thing where smoothness really matters, it's the skin tones. So just how do you achieve such a smooth result on whatever you paint? After painting for a while, I came up with a set of specific tips that will help you get there. But first, do you set up your wet palette like this? If so, well, that's wrong. I mean, it can work, but not for what we are gonna do today. There are two problems. First one is that using just the foam is not enough. Do you ever get a feeling like your wet palette goes dry way too early? Because of this problem, getting the right paint dilution is very hard. That might be because the foam kinda holds the water without releasing it on top. And that means your parchment paper on top gets dry rather easily and you have to refill your water quite often. Now, this doesn't mean that you should burn all the hydration foams, they are still useful, but use some paper towel on top of that. About two to three layers should be enough to transfer the water from the foam to the parchment paper, and you can dilute your paint properly. However, do you notice how the paint kinda shrinks towards the brushstroke? This is not a bug. This is a feature. Because I am using slightly waxed parchment paper, the surface has this non-sticky quality that is highly desired. Diluting your paint is easy on a non-sticky surface and the paint will stay fresh for longer. Unfortunately, not all parchment papers have this feature. You can still use them, but perhaps you'll have to refill your paint more often. Once you have your hydration and parchment paper problems sorted, it's time to paint. And for that, don't use glazing. Yeah, that's right glazes. It takes a shit ton of time and it's not even that smooth. Look at this paper. I am using 4 to 1 water to paint ratio and as you can see, the pigment is not distributed evenly at all. Most of the pigment concentrates around the edges of the brushstroke. You can mitigate this by wicking off the excess liquid and by touching the surface very lightly without stopping at any point. However, if you do this on a miniature, it's gonna take you a long time to build up a gradient. And if you eventually leave there a visible brushstroke, you are gonna spend a lot of time fixing it with more glazes. The solution? Easy. Just use thicker layers. The base coat is usually your thickest layer and the paint dilution increases as you progress, but not too much. Simply get some paint, add a drop of water, spread it a little bit and paint. So what is the trick to get smooth results here? The trick is to paint as many different layers as you can covering 90% of the space you painted before that. So if I started with a really dark base coat, as you should always do, I will add a tiny bit of lighter color and cover majority of the previously painted space, but not all of it. Then I will add a tiny bit more of my lighter paint and do the same for the previous layer. The key here is that you leave some of the previous layers visible and together they form a nice gradient. You don't always have to cover exactly 90% of the previous layer, but it's a good rule of thumb. Sometimes you will cover less or more because some parts are just naturally more exposed to light. With this process, I am building lighter and lighter layers towards the main reflection. Also, all my brush strokes are aiming towards the middle of it. The more layers you paint between your lightest layer and the darkest layer, the smoother the result is gonna be. Now, sure enough, you can stop whenever you feel like. And if you see some inconsistencies, we are gonna deal with them later. But to even get to this stage, you you need to understand another important thing. Don't use paint that is too old. That means paint that has been sitting on your palette for longer than three hours or so. But I guess it depends. So why does it matter? You can simply add some water to make your paint usable again, right? Well, yes, but actually no. You see, the paint works very nicely when you add a drop of water, but it also has a medium or other solvents inside which makes the result smoother. If all the medium has evaporated, the paint will no longer have the best features. By just adding some water into the pigment without medium, your brush strokes will become even more visible. I guess that you could add some medium like this, which is better than just water for dried up paint, but I like refilling my paint entirely instead. Okay, so now if you have used enough layers, you should end up with a result that's quite smooth already. And we can push this gradient further by glazing. Hold up. Okay, I know what you're thinking. But Zumikito, you told us not to use glazes, you piece of shit. And you are correct. That's why we'll use stipple glazing. Okay, so what the f is stipple glazing? Well, it's a stippling with glaze consistency. The reason why it's so effective is because you can leave a tiny bit of pigment anywhere you want 
and therefore you can fix mistakes easily. The advantage of using stipple glazing over standard glazing is that you don't leave any visible brush strokes. Just thin down your paint to a glaze consistency and paint a tiny little dot anywhere you need. You either pick your mid-tones to smooth out the gradient or you can build up the highlight as well. Just keep in mind that it will take you some time to paint anything with this method, but it's very forgiving. And as always, don't touch the paint again until it's dry. Theoretically, you could skip stipple glazing and the following final step if you are happy with your result already, but we are gonna push it further. It's time to refine our gradient with an airbrush. The key here is to use such a high dilution of paint that it won't ruin anything that you painted so far. You wanna pick some kind of shade color. In this case, I could pick some browns, reds or magenta. It really depends on what you like for the skin tone shades. Pour a few drops of water into your airbrush together with a bit of airbrush thinner and matte varnish. Now put a tiny bit of paint inside as well. If you get like 1 to 9 solvent to paint ratio, that's about right. This mix will make it easy for you to control the paint as you spray it. Before even going for the miniature, feel free to test this on a piece of paper. You should get very transparent paint which gets more opaque the longer you hold your airbrush in one place. So if you spray this mix somewhere you didn't wanna, it's barely even visible. However, you can still build up opacity over time, which is what we are gonna do. On the actual miniature, I am aiming towards the shades to blend them and make them deeper. You can spray a bit around the highlights, but not too much. By going over the shades and the midtones, you will even out all the slight imperfections that you didn't get previously. Because each layer is very transparent, don't worry about spraying a bit somewhere else. Also notice what I am doing with the trigger of the airbrush. I let the air flow first and then release a tiny bit of paint. For this technique, I recommend using a bit lower pressure for better control. Like this, you can build up multiple layers quite fast because it dries very quickly. It's also up to you how deep do you want your shades to be or if you want to use some other colors as well. I definitely use this entire process mostly for skin tones, but I think that it can work for pretty much anything. Now, if you do like these tips, you might actually appreciate this video, which is about seven universal tips that can improve pretty much any miniature. And see you there!